Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business and today in the world of QuickBooks point of sale I'm going to explain to you the difference between the different customer orders and that would be right here. We have sales order, layaway, and work order. Those are three different things but they look very similar when you open them up. Before we get into it, I'm going to ask you to click on the link below and jump over to our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group. You can join up there and ask any questions you might have. People such as me or other Point of Sale users will answer your questions in a wonderful community. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe down below so you can catch all of our latest, greatest videos when they come out. They're coming out all the time. All right, let's quickly go over this. You may have seen this icon and never used it in your point of sale. Customer orders are for, uh, I would say, a, they're a way to sell things that is not as quick and straightforward as a make a sale receipt. And so what I mean by that is we've got three different styles here and they have very specific purposes, but at the same time, they're sort of malleable and I've seen them used in amazing ways, uh, in, in very custom ways that, that are actually beyond what I'm gonna explain today. But I'm just gonna explain the key differences between these three things. All right, so we've got your layaway, I'm gonna mention first. Now layaway is for products that you have in stock. It's so that somebody, your customer that is, you'd put their name down here, and you'd add uh, items that you do have in stock and you have them right there and you well if you don't know what a layaway is just kidding <laughs> you go to the store and you, you put it aside you don't have all the money right now but that store wants to secure your purchase so they say hey we're gonna put this in the back for you I used to do this a lot when I was younger for some reason uh, when I didn't have very much money I wanted I really wanted something and I didn't want them to go out of stock of it so I'd put it on layaway. They put it in the back room and you just make deposit upon deposit upon deposit until it's paid off and finally the glorious day comes when you get to bring it home and open it and it's so exciting because you spent, I don't know, hard work and you paid it off and you get to bring it home, you picked it up. It's the greatest thing ever. I, I feel like this was prevalent a little more yesteryear. I don't know, maybe it was just me as a kid. I don't know if maybe people have more money these days, but I, I haven't heard a whole lot about layaway, but you can certainly do it. Anyway, put things that are in stock on layaway, and uh, of course you're going to um, make or take a deposit when there is items here and you just keep making deposits until it's all paid off. Okay, that's a layaway. Key factor there is that the product is in stock. Now, you may also have customers that come into your store who know that sometimes you carry certain products, but they're not seeing them there. And so they're like, uh, what happened to such and such thing? Uh, do you still order that? And you, you might be like, oh yeah, we're just totally out right now. It's, it's a really hot item. We can't keep it in stock. And so what somebody may do then, or what you may do as a store owner, is do a sales order. And a sales order can also have deposits. It can, you can either require a deposit or suggest a deposit. And with a sales order, the key factor there is the item is not in stock but it is an item on your item list and, and you may want to order it uh, or you, you may have already ordered it. Actually, it might be on its way and this person just wants to reserve it as soon as it gets there. Sales orders are awesome because customers can pay ahead of time. Uh, you could also use it maybe as a facility for pre-order, but the customer wants to make sure they get one and you have either told them it's on the way or I can order that and those are two different situations. Let me tell you about that a little bit. With a sales order, the customer puts a deposit down. Now, if it's not something that you were actually thinking of ordering again, but this customer totally wants it, then the awesome part is you can go from a sales order and, and go right into a purchase order. So you know the customer wants it, you weren't thinking of ordering it, but since they want it, you told them you would order it, and you can flip from a sales order right over to a purchase order and order it from your vendor. 
And then, of course, that flows into the receiving voucher. And so you can see on the arrows on the screen here, customer order, order list. It goes down to purchase order sometimes and then to receiving vouchers. So it's an awesome workflow to order in things that people want on a sales order. And then the other one I talked about there is you've already ordered it. It's on the way. You can't keep it on the shelf. The customer wants to make sure that they get it before it sells out. So you can make a sales order for something that's already on its way. You've already uh, sent a purchase order to your vendor or you've already ordered it. It's on the way. And the awesome thing here is putting it in a sales order and taking a deposit. Then when you receive that item in, your receiving voucher will pop up a message saying, hey, don't forget, these are on order. They're on a sales order. So two out of the five that you just received are actually already spoken for. And that's a great way to catch yourself Make sure that your customers are satisfied. Make sure that they get what they want. And that is the sales order. Uh, and that's actually, there's a column on your inventory list that says on order. And, and so that column actually has to do with sales orders and having quantities that are already reserved. And those quantities are actually not available as soon as it shows up. That is awesome. Now the last one here is work order and the way that the work order differs just a little bit from the other ones is we're jumping into it here. Uh, when you do a work order, it's actually most of the time going to be items that you already have in stock again. It may be one item or several items, but usually there's something that needs to happen to this item uh, in order for the customer to be satisfied. Uh, this can fit so many situations and so a work order is something needs to be done before the customer would actually pick up the item or purchase it for final pickup um, i can think of so many things it's it you could do customization you know you could be a shop that embroiders things engraves things uh, all the way up to like a landscape place where the customer wants a, B, and C tree, and then the work order is there because you're going to send guys out and they're going to install the trees or they're going to do a big landscaping job. So they ordered a bunch of brick and patio pavers and it's going to be put together in a certain design and you're going to describe exactly all the work down here that's going to be done for this customer. It can be printed out on a big sheet. Work orders are awesome because you can set up your own individual statuses there's three default ones, but you could you could set up you know seven different, ten different statuses uh, that would be a pipeline for your work order to go through. Okay, we had this piece, we sent it to the blacksmith, we got it back, and then we embroidered it. I don't know. And so these all could be stages, and the final stage could be ready for pickup. And then on your work order screen, you would just look at all the all the work orders today that are ready for pickup and you call all those customers. It's a really great system. And right up here, you can see uh, assigned. So this work order is ready to go. I've got items on it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to assign it to Bob. And then when Bob is ready, he's going to start on the work order. So these are all examples. And we, we talked all about the three different customer orders here. Uh, I think you have probably have a better idea of what these are now. Most people leave them alone because they're like, I have no idea what the difference is and they all look the same. Why would I use one or the other? I just don't want to get into it because I, I don't feel like learning this stuff or I don't know how to learn or I don't know where to look to learn about it. So there you go. That's the big difference between those orders. My name's Peter with BlackRock Business. Thanks for coming along this little explanation of different customer order types. I hope you have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.